All right, today we're having a brief look at ProQuest Heritage Quest. Uh, so this is a genealogical resource that includes records from over 60 different countries. Uh, it also has a bunch of different uh, tools like maps that will show you how um, different counties were drawn uh, and pulls from tons and tons of different resources. So this is a great tool um, for advanced genealogists or just for somebody that's looking to get started. Uh, so to begin, we're going to go to ohiowebliberary.org and you can find this tool underneath genealogy. Um, we're going to click right here and that's going to take us to Heritage Quest. All right, so from this first page, there's a few different ways to get started. We can jump directly to a resource here. You can see um, there's the U.S. Census records if I wanted to search directly from there. Um, but we also have a bunch of other stuff here that we can hop directly into. Um, so let's get started, though. The easiest way to do so is to go up here to the search button. This is going to reveal a bunch of different sources that you can go directly to. Uh, sort of like the main page, uh, but just a little bit more condensed and um, also offering a few different other options here down toward the bottom. So uh, just to show you guys kind of how the program works, I'm going to hop into a 1940 census search here. So, okay, if we're looking for a specific individual, um, we can go through and just put in the information we know about the individual. So I'm going to begin by adding what I know. And if we know other information, like if we knew that the person was in the army, if they were a pilot, as it says here, or um, anything else that we might be able to use to track down the record to disambiguate from other records, we can add that in the keyword field. If we know familial relations, too, if you're working through like a family tree, you can add this information here, um, and that can really help narrow things down. You can see there's dozens and dozens of different um, things that we can add here. Uh, but I'm going to head, go ahead and just go forward with this search as we have it here, really, really broad. Okay, so as I search here, it's going to bring up a list of records that match what I've entered. Um, this is a fairly distinct name, so you can see we can pretty easily pick out the ones that are going to be most useful to us. However, if we did find that um, we needed to add something or change something in the search, we can always go back to Edit Search here to do so, and then Update from there. You can see... Uh, if we're not exactly sure about how the person's name was spelled, if it varies from time to time, um, we can leave this extremely broad. Uh, if we know exactly what it should look like in all the records, we can pump it all the way over to right, uh, to the right to get exact. Um, so this is really useful if you if you're pretty confident, and it's also very useful to draw it back to if you're not entirely confident about what it might be to give you some more search results. Um, you can do the same thing for last name and also for um, a place of birth. Um, so let's see. From here, I can hover over a record to generate a preview of it. Um, you can see here this is going to give me a lot of information that I can use to confirm that this is the actual individual I'm looking for. It'll also kind of strip a lot of the information that we might be interested in from the record, which is really useful with some of the grainier records where it might not be super easy to tell what's going on. Um, once we find something that we're interested in taking a look at, I can click here on View Record or I can go directly to the image here too to go directly to the image. But let's click on View Record to take a look. You can see on this view record page, I can send the document directly um, to an email address, which is extremely useful if you're compiling a lot of information or if you just want to give like a relative a heads up about something. Um, you know, hey, I found this record from our family. You can send it directly from here. Um, we can also enter a, a uh, printer friendly view right here too, if we want to just go ahead and print the information from this page off. Um, so let's go ahead and hop directly into the image here to see um, what the, the reading view looks like. So from here, you can see one of the really nice things is at the top, it'll actually label all of the, the headings. They're really hard to see sometimes, especially with the older documents. So this is a really nice service that kind of makes it a lot more um, legible for people as they're working through. You can also see that it highlights entries of interest. So since I came into the document looking for Flav Vasilius's information, um, he's going to be highlighted in yellow. Now, 
it's still not extremely easy to see what's going on here. So I can actually use my tools on the right hand side here to zoom in to get a closer look. You can see it becomes much, much more legible. Now this document's fairly clear, but I can also play around with like the contrast and a bunch of other tools too. Um, if I go in through here, I can invert colors, um, I can flip the document, um, I can do lots of different things to it from here. Um, I can also download the document directly or print from here too. Um, so you can see if I were to invert these colors, we get to stand out a little bit more like this. Um, so that can be extremely useful if we're working with, like I was saying before, the older documents that are kind of grainier. Um, you can flip that, um, the polarity of the colors and uh, make it a lot more visible. Um, so I can go all the way in here and I can see a lot more detail about this individual and you can see the header remains consistent throughout here. So that's the basics of like the reading view and doing like a really basic search. I also wanted to hop back to the beginning here to show you guys some of the other tools that are available. Um, so we also have this research aids here, which will kind of give you some background on how to use each of these different documents. And we also have this really cool maps features. Um, so from here, I can tell what the boundaries were throughout time for a given state, um, for the counties and um, for just different types of boundaries, essentially. So as I click on Ohio, I can see the 1790 map overlaid over top of the current um, uh, counties that we have. And as we progress through, you can look toward the bottom. It's going to kind of give you some information about why the counties are drawn up that way or what changes have happened. And we can go all the way up to 1920, where essentially um, everything looks about the same as far as the boundaries for the counties. So Heritage Quest is a great genealogical tool. Uh, please do play around with it. Um, there's tons and tons of features there. Definitely explore that homepage if you get a chance to. Thank you, guys.